Okay, so on the show this morning, or today, the relevance and the effectiveness of the celebration of International Workers' Day is on the front burner. And um, especially as it relates to workers in our immediate environment. Now, what used to be when we talk about workers? And has it changed? Has anything changed? Um, the reason for all of the agitations, you know, have they changed over the years? How can we balance life and work? How do we deal with horrible employers and employees? And a lot, lot, lot more questions that we have on our... Horrible employers. Horrible employees. <laughs> Terrible. There are some of them out there. Yeah. And employers too. Okay. Mm. Well, anyway, our very experienced guest on this matter is already with us online. Yeah. And uh, before we hit the ground, uh, let's let's talk about a few things that have kept our minds ticking this week. Mm. Helen, you're usually very good with observing things. What can I think of? Okay. So tell us what has kept you. Well, a lot of politicking here and there. Yes. I mean, you can't be in this environment now and not be, you know, in the know of all of that. Mm -hmm. So many people coming on to be wanting to be president, wanting to be governors and all of that. And that that's politicking that's, that's in everywhere season. in season. Yeah. And um, insecurity still not abating. Continues, yeah. All over the country, north, east, west and south, we're still hearing um, some very disturbing news. Um, gory stories. Gory stories. Mm. One very pathetic was the one, the two... Um, person's spouse, a husband and a wife to be from the military on their way to the east. Mm, yeah. I was there on Tuesday or Wednesday for their traditional marriage. John, can you believe it? Mm. And they were apprehended, they were abducted and they were slaughtered. Slaughtered. Barbaric. Barbaric. But the good news is that um, the people who did it, somehow, somehow they've been there's some investigation going on and yeah, well, um, the but, military but has that sworn bring, that they must that find the dead? it would never it, it would never it would never it doesn't uh, and uh, um the asu strike still on almost <laughs> more than two months now yeah and i hear that there are some other groups joining mm. in yeah and we really and, must and feel Nan, a lot of pity and for Nan has come in to say that uh, uh, there will be no Primaries anywhere, unless the schools, the universities are open. I don't know what strategies they have. I don't know how mm. they plan to do that. But mm. yes, they have come to say, uh-uh. Mm. Wow. Yes, we need to go back to school. If we, we don't to, go back to school. We need to, to school, go back to yeah. school. Mm. We need to go back to school. And talking about which, you know, I would have, as much as I would have loved for us to switch over to, get off all of this and switch over to our guests, I, I think we, we need to. <clears throat> get her back online. Mm. You know, she's gone online, okay. off offline temporarily, okay, okay, okay. and um, we'll, we'll get we'll get her shortly. Mm, mm. So um, I, I, I also stumbled on um, another news. I don't know how true it is that the airlines are threatening mm. to stop operation, like from Monday. Give it Helen, next week, could you give us positive news? Okay. <laughs> it's all negative, negative. Mm. Anyway, our guest is back. That's good news for mm. us. Mm. Our next uh, our guest mm. is back. Mm. And of course, you know, this is today with John and Helen. It's live on Plus TV Africa. <sighs> it's a show which caters for the needs of the family. For May 1, 1st of May, May 1, I don't know which one to choose, You're or the, the International moment. Workers' Day <laughs> is our focus on this edition of the show. Okay, so straight away, let's meet our guest, who is a seasoned human resource professional with a career spanning over 18 years, cutting across the finance and human resource functions within the oil and gas transportation, fabrication, heavy equipment, and power generation industry. She's gone through all of this. She's been a worker for over 18 years. Our guest is a graduate of management and accounting from the Obafemi Awolu University, Ileife, with an MBA from the prestigious Lagos Business School. Impressive. Mm. Well, permit me to add also that the guest, our guest, is also a certified project management and global human resource professional. She's a life coach. She enjoys mentoring young graduates 
and upcoming professionals. Mrs. Ola Oluwatoyi Oshinaiki has seen it all in the work arena and is here to answer our numerous questions. Welcome to Today with John and Helen. Madam? Madam. <laughs> welcome. And this, yes, thank you so much for having, for joining us on the show. This should thank be... Thank you for having me. Mm, with all of your and experience. John, yeah, John, you should get an award. You pronounce the surname quite well. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> You're uh, very kind. Thank you. He stumbled on uh, the first day. I'm indeed, I'm indeed <laughs> flat, yes, I'm <laughs> flattened. <laughs> but <made up> for <laughs> okay. I'm flattened. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, I think for that reason, I should fire the first salvo. Mm. We have loads and loads of questions for you, sure. you know, regarding Workers' Day and all of that. Now, today's worker you know, looks more weary, tired, stressed up than yesterday's worker. What would be the reasons behind this? Hmm. Um, when you say um, today's worker and, you know, comparing to workers in the past. Yes. I think what has happened is that we're juggling a lot more than the workers in the past were juggling. The, the problems seem the same, you know, from afar. But when you take a closer look at it, you would realize that we're juggling more than our parents were juggling back then. You agree with me that the same, let me use this um, example, the same level of infrastructure hasn't gotten any better. And we are still coping with life with those same infrastructures. A good example is the traffic gridlock. We have um, the same road network that my parents had back then. Okay. In fact, at times when I talk about, when I worked, used to work in a papa, then in 2010, and you know, I tell my mom that while I was working with Niger Dock and it was next, just right next door to Tinkan, at times we were leaving the office and just here, don't bother today because a container has fallen across the road. Mm. Mm. And then we're trekking two hours and people can't come to work the next day. So I was sharing that with my mom and she was like, when I was working in that axis, it was the same story. Mm. Would so, our politicians um, agree with you? Because so, um, okay. <laughs> they've always promised new roads, <laughs> water, mm. power. Would they agree with you? Oh, no. You see, everybody will talk from their own perspective and everybody will tell you what they feel that you want to hear. It's for you to decide how the shoe pinches you and what you want to do about yeah, it. That's right, yes. That's right. Okay. So, okay, go on. Go on yeah, yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned this, uh, Papa Axis, you know, Lagos is very peculiar. And um, I, I was in a papa for uh, just last week or two weeks ago, after like 10 years or six, seven years. And that madness is still there, but a little bit controlled. You know, the big trailers are parked on one side and there's some small passage for people to move around. And so, so one wonders that when you're talking about workers' welfare, the, the worker is expected to be at work every day, except you have a saint for a bus, you know? And then you have to go oh, yeah. through all of this. But even at that, some people tell us today that workers of this day have more job opportunities. Would you say this is correct? Oh, yes, I agree. I agree. Um, you... you here, I'm sure you've heard a lot of a lot of talk about the future of work, and you know, as um, a lot of people will tell you, the future of work is now. People have choices now. The choices they didn't have those days. You know why? Because of the advent of social media, because of the um, advancement of technology. There are options. A good. I'll use myself as an example. With the um, advent of COVID in 2020. A lot of us would have said work from home is not possible. Mm. It's not an option. But even bosses that would want to micromanage you and have you in the office had to contend with the fact that there was nothing they could do about it, at least for that period of time. And working from home, a lot of people discovered it, it, that it could work better. And a lot of people, even bosses, discovered that, okay, I'm still getting what I want. But in the same vein, 
Some other people found that they couldn't cope. They needed to be in the office. Yeah. And then, to digress a bit, some people found the opportunity that they could have a side hustle and actually run with it. Mm. Then they had the mind that, okay, yeah, I have an option. And they don't. And after the um, COVID and people started coming back to the office, they decided, no, 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 I don't think I want to do this anymore. And they went with their side hustle because during that period, the side hustle had actually you know, gain ground and they were making a lot of money and they were thinking to themselves, you know, trying to weigh, weigh the options and they're like, I think I'm better off working from home. At least I don't have to report to that horrible boss. Mm. So yes, there are options, more options now than we had back then. So clearly we're on the same page there. It's mm. not for lack of options, right? The, the, the worker today has more options, opportunities, more opportunities, yeah. mm. you know. Now we say more perspiration, less inspiration. And that appears to be the best description for the typical Nigerian worker today. He's scrambling around everywhere, but he's not inspired. What do you think? What do you really think would inspire him? Okay. Um, I'd like to answer this question from the perspective of um, a coach and a therapist. Let me share something with you. I was in the kitchen yesterday evening and my son said something. He said, Mommy, that's, he's about nine years old. He said, Mommy, happiness, um, money cannot buy you happiness. I said, Yes, you're right. And my first daughter goes, But Mommy can. And, you know, I was trying to get her thought. I said, So what do you think? What do you need money for? I said, Buy things, you know, buy this, buy that. And I was, and I was told, I said, How many people do you know of recent that have committed suicide? And I had loads of money. Mm -hmm. And she paused. I said, think about it. Happiness is a choice. Yeah. We're all faced with different, various circumstances. You know, some people will tell you, okay, if I get this job, I'll be happy. If I get married, I'll be happy. The same way in the workplace as well. You'll get to work in some places. You might get the inspiration you need, get a good boss. Good for you. Yeah. But at times, you might find yourself in places where your boss, going to work in the morning, you're, you're, you're feeling depressed. Your blood pressure is going off, going up. Your heart is palpitating because you don't know what you'll meet for that day. Yeah. But in the midst of it all, you tell yourself, I'm doing this because I love what I do. Or I'm doing this for this time, just for the time being. I have a plan B. So there must be something within you that brings about that inspiration. If you're looking outside for the inspiration, especially in today's world, you might have to look for a very long time. Yes. Mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, so many things are flying through my head as you answer. Uh, I read a piece last week where they were, you know, bringing back the previous leaders of this country from Awolowo, you know, to Tafa Balewa, to his Gowan himself. Mm. At very early age, they were matured mm. enough to take leadership positions. They were prepared. You know, so when, when we talk about the job opportunities now are more than they used to be, I'm asking, are the youth of today, are the workers actually prepared, you know, to take these additional responsibilities that bring in new, I mean, more resources? That's tickling in my head. <laughs> but my question for you at this point is, as a fallout of this, of this more work and less pay syndrome, how is the typical family affected? Because this is majorly a family show. Mm. Um, I'm glad you asked that question. And, um, you know, and when you also asked as well, uh, the, the, the first um, point you raised before you asked this question, that are the youth prepared as well to even take up opportunities? Mm. Um, I, uh, the first thing that came to my mind when you made that point was that it all stems from the family units. You agree with me that um, a lot of the values you hold dear today and your beliefs, or whatever your belief system is today, if you take a good look at it, you'll discover that it stems from the family unit or your associations when you were growing up. Yeah. The psychologist will tell you that give me a child for the first seven years of his life and his mind forever. It's, it's, it's a profound statement because a lot of the beliefs and values we work with today as individuals stems from our experiences when we're growing up and most of it from the family unit. Now, if the family unit is not, um, is not value driven, and the values also depend, that's another thing. Your values are different from my own values. Sure. 
but there should be a fundamental or basic factor that runs through all the values. It's humanity. That's the most important thing. So the values you were brought, brought up with and the values I, I was brought up with should, whatever they are, should all stem towards being humane towards one another. That's the key factor for me. Now, these days, because just like you said, back to your question, a lot of, um, because of the race, the rat race, the, 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 the struggle to make ends meet, a lot of families find themselves in a position they do not want to be. Mm. But if you ask me, it's at that point in time that you should sit back and ask yourself, what is your goal in life? What are the things that you hold dear? For example, when I started my career, I knew I would, I, um, I would be a career person. I love to work. But I told myself that family first. Mm-hmm. I remember going for an interview back then and, you know, we finished the interview and they said, do you have any questions? After I'd asked the question, my second question was, I hope it's not compulsory for me to work weekends mm-hmm. and to work late. And, you know, the guy looked at me. I said, no, don't get me wrong. If I have work to do, you don't have to tell me I'll work late because I want to deliver. If I have to come in on a Saturday, if I need to, I would come in. You don't have to tell me. But I don't want you to tell me it's compulsory. Mm. And the guy looked at me and said, you actually took out time to ask that question. I said, yes, because my family comes first. Mm. Wow. Because it was a decision I had made. And, you know, he couldn't, he, the guy was wondering that. And I was like, the choice is yours. If you want mm. me or not, what are you after? Is it for me to deliver? Mm. Or for me to do the high, the high service of my boss's yeah. store? Here, so I can't leave. No, 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 no. I won't do that because at that point in time, I had a growing family, yeah, and I wouldn't compromise it for anything. Mm. So, for me, if you ask me, yes, a lot of families do have to face that struggle these days, but like I said, the choice is yours. You have to decide what's important to you, what's your priority list, and on that list, what is most paramount to you, yeah. But you see, um, yeah, I like the scenario that you painted. But it would appear <clears throat> that uh, you were probably working from a position of strength. I mean, maybe your employer. I was out of a job. John, sorry to cut in. I was out <laughs> of a job at that point in time. I was out. Of, I just had my first child and yeah. I was out of a job for a year okay. before I started looking for a job again. Mm. The, the, the point I'm even trying to make is that uh, <clears throat> for a lot of people, they may, they may be too scared or, you know, too desperate. Yeah, too know, desperate. Not That's wanting to lose the work, yeah, the, the to, opportunity. Yes. To, to, to now give those counter conditions, conditions kind of. you know, to employers. But it's, it's, the point you have made is, 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 is well taken and understood. You know, but again, we just want to look at people who may be weaker mm. than you are you know, in negotiating for jobs. Okay, John, yeah. let me come in there. You see, I've also been in that position before. And let me tell you what I did, because I've, I've had the opportunity to move around. I tell people not by choice, but that's the way, that's the way events have played out in my life, and I have no regrets. Mm. I'd been, I think about, I've been home for about two years, and by then I had my third child. And you agree with me that in Nigeria, relying on the income of just one partner in a, in a home hmm, for, for two years, it's a lot of struggle because whether you have savings, you have investment, you have to start replenishing at one point in time or the other. Yes. And I had, yes. And I went for the interview. Usually it's my husband that takes me for most of my interviews. So I went for the interview and I got to that place, you know, I had the interview. And when I got into the car, you know, I told my husband, I said, I'm not really keen about working here. Mm. You know, and he told me, he said, to be sincere, even looking from outside is not really keen about me working here. But I sat back and I looked at, what options do I have? I've been home for two years. And reality is, you know, knocking at the door. I'd, I had to make a decision quick and fast. Yes. So I thought about it. Okay, what can I deal with? What can I not deal with? Let's start out first. Mm-hmm. But while I start out, let me also... It's the opportunity for me to even get my foot in the door first and get back into the, into the work yeah. environment. Yes. And then I might start looking at other options. So I had to take that call at that point in time. Yes, I understand. There are times you need to take those decisions. Yes. Uh, well, okay, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the Nigerian worker, as a matter of fact, not just the Nigerian worker, most workers people, work. are hard workers. You know, they, hard, they work hard. People all over the world are working harder than ever before. And, but they say that the reward for hard work is more work. <laughs> How can today's worker cope? His plate is full already. He's working hard already. 
But they now say that the reward for hard work it's is not. even more work. How so? Mm -hmm. Um, they say the reward for hard work is even more work. But you agree with me that if the hard work is not adding value, they won't give you more work. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> First thing, let's get that right. Yes. So if they tell me hard work, the, one of the um, line managers that told me hard work then was because I'd done very well in, you know, in the assignments and tasks that had been given to me. So I knew that it was time for more work. Mm. So we have to put it in perspective. If it's doing work that because they see that you You've gotten a hang of the task and you can do better and they can challenge you, they give you more work. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if it's more work that in terms of labor, you know, hard labor, and there are no there, there are no what's the word now, no, no corresponding um, compensation in that regard, then we mm. can say hard work, more work because you need to make more money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in that instance, <laughs> yes. in that instance, you agree with me that. Even if you decide that you want to do the labor work as much as possible, get to a point in time that your body will tell you, I can't go on. Yes, mm. even when the compensation is there. Thank you. <laughs> so now, back to where I started from, you have to decide <laughs> yourself that, okay, hard work, more work, okay. what is it making sense to me? If you tell me hard work, more work, it will make sense to me. That means I'm delivering, I'm adding value to the system and they're giving me more work. Yeah. Hey, that's what I want to hear. Because very soon I'm going to be negotiating a higher pay or a bonus or something. Yeah. Mm. But if it's hard work, labor work, and you're dying, oh please. <laughs> so Let once, me give you a good example. Once you get <laughs> to your break, once you get to your break even in quotes, <laughs> get to your break even point, you don't want to go beyond it for nothing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for nothing. Yes, it's yes, for nothing. Okay? Yes. Yeah. I had um, you know, usually in my position, Ed of HR, you deal with the unions at times. And if I have admin reporting to me, you also you also have to deal with the drivers as well. And I remember there was a time I had just resumed in a particular place, and I was looking at the overtime. Oh. Wow, it just didn't make sense. <laughs> yes. And I called the person that you know said okay was the head of the drivers, and I sat him down, quite elderly, much older than me anyway. And I sat him down. And I said, I said, okay, I've done an analysis of the numbers, your hours, and all that. It doesn't make sense. There's no human being that can work like this. <laughs> if you do, you won't be seated in that chair in front of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one, and then if you feel that you're getting, you know, you're, you're making much more money, down the line, we would hear that, oh, one of them had high blood pressure. He's re retired. Yes. He has high blood pressure. He had a stroke. And then we're, you're raising money, funds yeah. to get him. Mm. And I'm like, well, you know what you're doing now? You're working yourself. You're, you're working, excuse me, let me not use the word, but you're working, let me use the head off. I wanted to use another word, home and life TV. And you're, you believe you're making the money. And then come 55, 60, they ask you to retire. And you have no use to yourself or to your family. Mm. Mm. So you have to try to yeah, no way balance, to, where, you know, no know when to, to exactly. Mm. No yes. Yeah. So whether hard work, more work, it's for you to decide. Oh, you're a good driver. I want you to come. Ah. You better ask yourself what you want to do. Yeah. And then you'll retire home. The family that you felt that would be there for you, you're not there for them because you spent most of the time working. That's right. Mm. They're not around for you as well. Mm. Mm. That's so, right. Yes, reality comes calling and then you ask yourself, what was, was it worth it? Okay. Well, once upon a time in this country, yeah, maybe about 40 years or less, um, we knew that even before you left the university, you had jobs, not one, waiting for you. And you were a toast, you know. People would like to give you interviews here and there. And the jobs are there with good pay. Pay that was able to take the worker home. How far will today's workers, how far do you think that today's workers' pay takes them home? Even in the midst of less employment opportunities. Does it take you know, them if we're using How that far does word. it take them? How far does it take the worker? <laughs> Right, I mean today. Yeah, I read. Um, I think I read an article. And I can't remember where that was. It nine only about ninety-two percent. No, about eight percent of Nigerians earn sixty thousand naira and above. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So wow. that means a large portion earn what. Just like John said, how far can the money take them? Mm -hmm. And that's why you see the advent and the embrace of side hustle. Mm. Because human nature 
is we'll find a way to cope. Mm. Yeah. And if you tell, if you, if you're somebody that you know, say to yourself, I all I can do is a honest work. I wouldn't, you know, do anything illegal. I wouldn't do anything that is immoral. You are forced to take a decision that okay, what can I do on the side? So that's why you see that there's a rampant um, clamor, and people are clamoring more for side hustle, that I must have something doing outside. This money can take me on. And then another thing is that that is not working for the, that is not, um, let me, for lack of a better way to put it, that is working against workers is the labor law is quite outdated. Okay. There's the no... um, standards or anything you know regulating how people are paid why i say this is because i remember working in a particular organization and i'm telling the own the uh, owner of the organization that this won't work you're telling us to pay people fifty thousand. let's sit down and calculate it the transport to and fro and the lunch they will have mm. what's been that that the money is gone and he goes to me there are a lot of people out there who would take who would jump at that offer yeah and quite frankly, that point that's that a horrible. just made, yeah, that mm. point, that's the reality of uh, what is happening. So, exactly. So if there's nobody regulating that, and they know that truly because people are out there desperate, what would happen? People would mm. actually jump at the offer. Mm. But like I said at the beginning, you know, it's that the fact is that that's why you see people embracing fight also. Yeah. Because they need to survive. Yeah. And you'll even find, you know, you, you'll even find husband and wife working, you know, to earn an income. But again, there's a there's a there's a, a, a flip side to that coin. You know, the home front suffers. What, what would even be your advice? Where husband and wife have to work to be able to you know, to meet up, but the home front suffers. Mm. What would you say yes, to them? Yes. yes. How do you they have, you, you. how do they balance it? Okay, you've you've made a very valid point, and um, we, to be sincere, what we see in society today is part of um, the price we are paying for that, mm. whether we want to admit it or not. That's the price we're paying for that um, for those choices we've made um, over time. Um, what usually helps a lot of people is the support system they have in place. Yeah. Now, I say that with a bit of you know. With a bit of caution, or because when the both parents have to work and put a support system in place, if the support system is not something you're comfortable with, but you have to make do with, you are not you are not able to function well even at work. Why I'm saying this is I have a lot of people worse, um, even myself as well. When in a senior position, you have to have a driver. Because you're driving home from work three, four hours traffic after the long day, you're left with no choice. I think I need to get a driver so that I don't die before my time. <laughs> Secondly, you need to have a nanny for those that have young children. You need to um, you need to have some other support. You know, the general support system, whether family close by, your mom is still able to stay with you, you know, things like that. You have to have them in place. But you agree with me that a lot of times the nannies and the drivers also are, are, are a challenge to have them in the home. Because you have to pay them. You have to, apart from paying them, you know, like you said, the family as well affected. A lot of your children get their values from them. Mm. Yes. Okay. Because you are no home to, you know, mm. to actually be the one to teach those values. Okay. Now for me, the way I coped with that um, was that there were certain times I had to be out of work out of employment yeah, because I knew that I needed to be with my children. So it was a choice I made. Yes. Okay. One. Then secondly, whenever I take nannies, I usually, in fact, a lot of the nannies that worked with me are nannies that my parents engaged for me. Be- why? Because my mom would come in, get a nanny and work with them for a while. Okay. So that was my own way of trying to, you know, mm. at least get somebody that shares the same values with me. Then I don't take young people. I take elder, elder, elderly people, women. And then I was also key about the fact that they must, they must be able to speak Yoruba. And they must speak Yoruba to my children. Because okay. I wanted my children to speak and understand Yoruba. Okay. 
and they must be elderly so that in case anything happens at home, they know what to do immediately. Mm. So those were the choices for me in terms of a nanny mm. because you're coming into my home and you're staying with me in my home. Mm. Because that makes... back then, that was the choice I had to make. Yeah, so if I knew sense. I was going to make that choice, let me go the extra mile of ensuring that the person I'm putting in place is someone is I can able have to, a level of trust. Is in. able to yes. fill your shoes is at it? least exactly. to a large extent. Yes, yes Exactly. Um, and then, in addition to that, I had I had very good support from my husband as well throughout my career. Mm. He's been very supportive. Great. So he also he gets some maybe like six, seven latest. Yeah. is home, and Great. I also get to maybe around that six, seven. They said there's bad traffic and maybe going to eight, nine. Yeah, so interesting. Okay. Exactly. And then. Okay, sorry, it just comes across to me like that was an excellent um, balance. And um, answering John's question is that you're recommending some of these steps and strategies to a lot of mothers and families who are probably watching this mm, program yeah. to say if you find yourself in this position, this, this is, is probably mm, how to go about do, yeah. it. And yeah. um, for me, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. It does. Mm, great, it does. great. So, um, mm. well, I, at this point, we will take a break. Oh, okay. Because we've mm -hmm. gone out on the streets, mm -hmm. we've asked a few questions, and we have some very interesting answers. So we'll go on this uh, little break. break and hear what the people are saying out there.